players that are new to poker tend to make very similar mistakes. And honestly, they're pretty simple things to fix once you can identify them. So today I'm gonna to help you identify the 10 things that new players continue to f up. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. I'm a poker player, coach, and author, and I've been playing this game for almost two decades now. And honestly, even from the very, very beginning to now, the same kind of mistakes tend to get made by players that are new to this game. And if you're new to poker, or more specifically poker strategy, I'm assuming of course you know what the ranking of hands is and how the game basically functions, if you're newer to poker strategy, stick around, this is gonna be right up your alley. So let's get started with number one. So league number one is simply playing too many hands preflop. So the issue when you're a newer player is that you don't really know what are easy slam dunk hands to play in every single spot, and what are hands that are kind of on the cusp, and then which hands are a little bit too weak. Yes, it's easy to fold seven deuce off suit preflop, but when should you be playing small suit connect? When should you be playing King Jack suited? When should you be playing Ace 10 off? A lot of newer players can't really answer those questions. And the issue is when you play too many hands preflop, oftentimes they're going to get weaker and weaker and they're going to lead to more and more losses and extra postflop confusion, which can create a lot of frustration overall, as well as hampering your win rate, of course. And while this overall leak does tend to impact players both when they're being aggressive and being passive, this tends to actually impact players a lot more when it comes to calling raises preflop, especially when someone open raises is pre and they're sitting there calling with way too many hands hands that would either function better as three bets or just simply folds and if you're finding this leak in your own game as well definitely make sure to check out the gto ranges app from red chip poker it's totally free to check out all the open raising ranges or you can unlock the app and get everything but definitely make sure to spend a little bit of time here and the exploitative ranges are extremely good if you're a newer player just search for the gto ranges app in your app store of choice or you can go to redchippoker.com app to learn more about it issue number two is simply ignoring position, especially preflop. So this leak and the previous one tend to go hand in hand, and that's when players play way too many hands preflop and tend to play them from the wrong positions. Yes, it makes a lot of sense to play a lot of hands from late positions, since your probability of being in position if you go postflop or just picking up the pot uncontested goes much, much higher. Versus when you're playing a lot of hands from early or middle position, chances are you're going to be out of position or monkey in the middle going postflop, and that can create a lot of extra complexity. If you're newer to the term being in position means that post flop you're going to be the one that acts last and that gives you some massive advantages because you get to see what your opponent does and how they react to certain board textures and actions and all that sort of fun stuff you get to decide when free cards are taken you get to decide when you want to apply pressure and most players aren't going to donk into you too too often which allows you to really control things at the end of the day post flop and that control can actualize in real win rates you really want to make sure that pre flop you're paying attention to hey is this a spot where i'm likely to be in position Position going post flop or maybe not so much and if you're not so much likely to be in position then you're likely going to play a little bit tighter number three is simply calling with too many weak hands post flop and this kind of goes hand in hand with leak number one where new players are playing too many hands pre flop usually calling them playing too passively and then post flop they catch some sort of piece and just continue calling usually sticking around for way too long now it's easy to take this too far in the opposite direction and just simply start playing too nitty and only continuing post flop facing bets when you have the nuts or something pretty close to it. However, this is one where kind of fish can differentiate themselves from more intermediate players by simply making sure they have a good reason and rationale for calling. Now, if you're not calling as much preflop, again, kind of goes hand in hand with the previous tips, then this isn't going to be as much of a factor. Maybe it will a little bit when you raise preflop and the flop goes check check and you start facing turn bets, but more often than not, this is going to be something that factors in for players who just simply call with way too many weak hands preflop. Leak number four is that new players tend not to pay anywhere near enough attention to who their opponents are. Now I get it, when you're new to poker, there's so many different things that you can focus on at any given point that it can be a little overwhelming and figuring out exactly what you should be focusing on and at what level can get a little complex. But if you're just simply always focused on your two whole cards, how your whole cards are hitting the board and not really thinking about your opponents or what their ranges are, or what they're likely to do, that is a massive, massive leak area because at the end of the day, your edge in this game is going to be based upon who your opponents are and how you can best take advantage of their weaknesses. If they're overfolding, are you bluffing often enough? If they're very, very nitty, are you simply getting rid of those very strong but not quite nuttish hands because they're telling you that they in fact have the nuts? If you're not doing these things regularly and constantly defining who your opponents are, what kind of mistakes they're likely to make, and then really, really working diligently to take advantage of the mistakes they make, 
you are just simply leaving way too much money on the table. And honestly, players that play like this are the exact ones that good players are taking advantage of regularly. So the next time you find yourself in a situation and really your internal thought process is simply what are my whole cards, how are they hitting the board, and that's it, definitely make sure to write that hand down because that's going to be one you want to study in the future so you can start thinking about it more objectively and outside of just what are your whole cards and what is your hand strength versus what is your opponent's range, what are they likely to do, and how can you take advantage of it. That's the way you want to start training your brain to think about this game strategically. All right, moving on to number five, and that is simply playing way too emotionally. Most players that are new to poker tend to let things like frustration and excitement really influence their overall decision making. They tend to play a lot of hands based upon how they're feeling right that moment as opposed to being able to think through things objectively and logically. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to learn how to be desensitized to the ebbs and flows of the game, the big excitements from a big suck out or the big disappointments from getting sucked out on and really just start to look at things purely objectively and as logically as humanly possible. And this is a skill set that definitely takes time to develop but it's definitely one worth developing because it will impact you not just at the tables but also in other decision making that you make well outside of poker so if you can learn how to control your emotions and make decisions based upon the correct info rather than purely based upon emotions that is going to help you a tremendous tremendous amount the sixth thing that new players still f up is that they bluff way too often now that being said, there are two different kinds of new players that are the kind that are extremely risk averse that really won't risk anything unless they have a nutish hand. And then there's most of the other ones, which are players who tend to play way too many hands preflop and as such have a lot of different hands in their postflop ranges that can and will end up bluffing a tremendous amount. And there are different ways that this can manifest overall. One of them is just simply bluffing way too often regardless when they have air, they just simply fire, fire, fire because well, that's the only way they can win the pot. And that makes sense to to some extent, but again, if you're not following the previous leaks from earlier, if you don't know who your opponent is, it's going to be very difficult to figure out if this is going to be a good bluffing opportunity or not. New players also tend to turn hands into bluffs that really would be much better checks instead, especially firing with things like top pair no kicker or second or third pair type hands, hands where if you bet and your opponent continues, are they really continuing with anything second best? That is massively problematic as well, and a lot of this just really boils down to playing the wrong hands preflop and getting involved with too many combos going post-flop, and the other is simply not knowing what goes into making a good profitable bluff in the first place. And if you're in that same boat right this moment, I would definitely suggest checking out Core from Red Chip Poker and rolling it. It is the absolute best resource for players who are new to poker. It has your complete A to Z syllabus, tons and tons of lessons, lots of hand examples, and everything you need to really get started on the right foot when it comes to playing this game well from a strategic point of view. Redchippoker.com slash core to learn more. Dive on in. I think you're going to get a ton of benefits from it again especially if you're a newer player and trying to figure out what the heck you're doing both pre-flop and post-flop start with core you will not be disappointed all right now leak number seven is failing to bet for value now this might seem to contradict the previous leak but this is actually something that a lot of new players tend to struggle with where they understand betting with the nuts they understand betting with bluffs might not necessarily understand how often they should be bluffing but they understand two bluffs some chunk of the time but the real issue is with those strong but not exactly nutish but not exactly too weak either sort of hands something like top pair second or third kicker or slight over pairs when a draw improves these tend to create confusion for newer players. And that confusion, of course, can definitely eat into your post-flop win rate. If you're constantly checking with these hands that could very easily be value bets against a lot of your opponents, that's going to be massively problematic. And this again ties to previous leaks, right? Getting involved with the correct hands pre-flop, but also knowing who your opponents are. If they're the kind of opponent that is going to continue with a lot of second best hands and you're constantly checking with top pair, second or third kicker, well, that's going to leave a lot of money on the table and that's going to massively hamper your win rate at the end of the day. And please, 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 please stop doing this if you're currently doing this right this moment. Leak number eight is continuing to ignore pot odds. Now I get that no one started playing poker because they were really interested in learning math, but you have to learn at least some basic math and pot odds are one of those things you have to learn even if you're a newer player. The sooner you can learn it, the better. Now pot odds come into play all over the place. Whether you're facing a pre-flop all in or a raise post-flop or just a bet post-flop, you have to be able to quickly identify what the pot odds you're getting are, how you can use that number to figure out how often you should be continuing and then choose hands that make the most amount of sense based upon the pot odds you're getting. But if you totally skip pot odds saying, no, I don't want to do any math in this game, 
I assure you, this is a math-based game, and if you skip it all together, it will absolutely kill you at the end of the day, and you're simply not going to be able to move up and make the kind of money that you want to make playing poker. And if you're interested in working on the math without having to worry about trying to figure it out in real time at the tables, make sure to check out my Prefop and Math Workbook. It is exactly what you're looking for. It runs you through all the formulas you need, tons of practice, and really lays out your off-table study. If you're interested in taking this game more seriously, this will help you a ton in real time be able to quickly make calculations and not have to waste a bunch of brain power at the table. In fact, you can start spending more brain power figuring out who your opponents are and how you can actually exploit them rather than wasting all that time pulling out your fingers and trying to figure out what the heck the pot odds are right this moment. Splitsuit.com slash prefop to learn more, pick up your copy, and if you're really working on building your strategy, this is going to be extremely helpful from the mathematical side of things 100%. All right, moving on to leak number nine, and that is simply lack of bankroll management. So even though new players tend to play the smallest stakes available and don't really need a massively dedicated bankroll, it is helpful to start thinking about what is my poker bankroll today and from that, what stakes should I reasonably be playing and what is my plan for moving up and getting out of these super micros? Because the issue is that if you don't use proper bankroll management, you're going to find yourself playing too high too quickly and just simply busting bankroll after bankroll and wondering what the heck happened. So what I typically suggest is that if you're a cash game player, start with 20 buy-ins for the game you play. So if you're playing one cent, two cent right this moment with a $2 buy-in, 20 times that is a $40 bankroll. If you have much more than that, consider taking shots. If you have much less than that, just stick to the smallest stake you have available. And if you're a tournament player, 100 ABI or 100 average buy-ins is typically what I would suggest. So if you tend to play $5 buy-ins, then five times 100 equals $500 for a starting bankroll. If it gets much lower than that, consider moving down. If it gets much higher than that, definitely consider taking shots quickly. And if you're interested in how to take shots well, watch that video right up there. I'll leave a little card up there. Definitely make sure to watch that if you're like, when should I be taking shots? That is a very, very helpful video. All right, leak number 10 is still a very common one for newer players, and that is not reviewing your hands and seeking advice early enough. So while new players may end up tracking how much they're winning or losing, they tend not to track specific hands very well, and they tend not to get advice on those hands or even just advice on general strategy stuff. Now, if you've watched this video up to this point, I'm assuming you're not falling into that same trap, but if you're interested in studying your hands out, getting actual feedback on it, and joining a community of players who are willing to talk poker pretty much 24 seven, and there's over 5,000 people doing it daily, definitely make sure to check out the Redship Discord if you haven't already, redshippoker.com slash discord to join today. Join a community of players who love this game just as much as you do. And if you have questions on hands or, hey, what does this term mean? Or, hey, what is this strategy and how does it actually apply? Or, hey, here's the exact game I play and what would you do in this spot? Definitely make sure to join it, ask some questions, look for the overall channels on the left, find the right one and jump on in. It's a great community and a great community is going to help you grow your game a lot, lot faster. Now, after you've joined the Discord, I would definitely suggest watching one of these two videos. Watch this one if you're looking for pre-flop tips or watch this one if you're looking for post-flop tips that are more oriented for beginner players. Either one is right up your alley. Enjoy it. If you need anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding.